Right, it's been a wild 24 hours in the world of the managerial merry-go-round in Hurling. I'm delighted to say Michael Verdi is with us. Michael, how you doing? Good, Jerry. Yeah, the, uh, it's like the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Well, the off-season was supposed to be quiet where the uh, sporting agenda is being handed over to other sports and yet somehow we end up talking about the managers because actually, you know what, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I think it was always going to be the case. I did a piece for the paper the other day. There were 11 vacancies. I think there's, what are we looking at? There's probably about nine now and it's the the pieces are kind of almost not interchangeable but it's a lot of the same names and we're talking about moving them to different places in the country but Davy is residing in Waterford for the next two years at least it seems it's obviously where his inter-county journey started and uh, listen as with anything with Davy it's going to be interesting anyway I can guarantee you that We'll get to Davy in a second, right? But I, you know, as as a, an Offaly man, I'm very interested to see what your response is to the news that's coming through. It, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but Liam Sheedy and Eamon O'Shea appear to be in line to take the Offaly job. Yeah, uh, Jura, if, if we can pull this one off, it would be a massive coup for Offaly. There's no point in saying any different. The two lads are obviously involved in you know, one of the great teams in that Tipperary team that stopped the five in a row in 2010 and then obviously came back in 2019 uh, and won the All-Ireland again in their first year back um, for a county that's rebuilding somewhat and has had a lot of lows over the past probably five to six years. This would be a massive coup for us. You know, it just the buzz even that was created when the story broke uh, by Pat Nolan in the mirror yesterday, the buzz around the county is, you know, like lads are kind of, the chest is nearly sticking out. You're thinking... Oh, okay. Maybe they see something. Maybe they see something here. Obviously, with a really good minor team this year, but that's like five to six years off seeing anything at senior level. But things have improved an awful lot in recent years. McFenney was there for three years. Probably raised the standards a good bit. We're still a fair bit off it, but having you know the caliber of Liam Sheedy and Eamon O'Shea and potentially Johnny Kelly, who was a direct link to the last three years. Uh, under Fenley and knows the squad inside out uh, it'd be hugely exciting there's no point in saying any different massively exciting uh, they're either the world's most dedicated hurling men slightly mad or we're about to see one of the great hurling story resurrections in Irish sporting history maybe it's one of the great Irish sports stories it's probably a combination of all of this have you any inkling about what's going on or how they how they might be tempted because I don't think I don't I didn't think they were in the running for a job or in the market for a job Nobody's in the running for a job until a call, a call comes. Interests are peaked a small bit. Um, obviously, see, there's so many moving parts with regards to managers in the off-season. Liam Sheedy wasn't available until Banty stepped down in Monaghan because he was involved with the footballers there. Then all of a sudden, he's free. It's the same with, we'll say, Anthony Cunningham uh, until he stepped aside with Ross Common. He's, he's a taken man, and you're not really going near him. And then all of a sudden... Maybe maybe the likes of a Dublin are, are, go, are going to him now. There's so many things moving parts with. You're involved in the setup one week, potentially you're not involved the next. You get a call. You know, a lot of these guys will say that, you know, John Mohan said before he got the call for Offaly, he'd no interest in getting involved in inter-county again. He'd no interest driving the length and breadth of the country. But it's almost like an obsession with these lads. You know, I'm doing a piece with, with Pat Bennett. He's the Ferns manager. He's probably one of Davies' right-hand men. They're playing... Uh, in the Wexford final on Sunday, and just he, they find it hard to say no to people. They find it hard to say no to the excitement of getting involved with another group, potentially you know improving a group. And you know for Liam Sheedy and Eamon O'Shea if they do come to Offaly, you no, know, it, it's a bit of a win-win really. The standard the standards are probably low enough at the moment where we are. We're obviously gone back to Division Two. We're in the Joe McDonough. To me, it's it's probably a win-win. They could really boost the boost the the profile of hurling within the county, boost the interest levels, and a lot of these guys, they just they really really find it hard to say no when opportunities come knocking. Uh, geographically, uh, you know, Port Row to Port Row to Kilcormack wouldn't be a million miles away. Salt Hill, where Eamon O'Shea is based, to Kilcormack, where the Faithful Fields are, not a million miles away. Um, so listen I hope I hope we can pull it off I hope we can pull it off it'd be a major coup if we could yeah and it like I don't think anybody thinks they're going to win an All-Ireland with Offaly in a short period of time but that point you make about there being just knock-on interest like all of a sudden we'll, we'll all be keeping an eye out for every single one of their games the preseason games as well there's like a, a box office characteristic to that I am surprised if the two lads were interested that other counties didn't make a bigger play for them because you can see what a transformative impact they might have on a Dublin, for example, or some other counties. And maybe they don't want to manage in, in Munster. I, 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 is that part of it as well? That like, there's very few jobs where 
ultimately they won't have to manage against their own county? Yeah, let's call it Spades Bridge or Offaly are not a threat at the moment. They're not a threat. They're not going to meet Tipperary in a really meaningful championship match where they have a realistic chance of beating Tipperary in a championship game. Uh, the only way they would meet them is potentially in maybe a preliminary quarter final or you know a quarter final if Offaly were to totally exceed expectations. So I think that's a big part of it. And that's one of the reasons even Mick Fenley said he was getting involved with Offaly. They weren't going to be playing Kilkenny. He wasn't going to have any of those... Um, you know, it wasn't going to be a, a struggle inside him going to get up against Kilkenny or anything like that. There wasn't no awkward going to be, handshake. Uh, yeah, well, that potentially too, yeah. But that it, it wasn't going to be there. And uh, yeah, they're going down. They're going down in a couple of tiers. Liam was obviously involved with with Antrim for a while as well. And it was the same scenario. Antrim were not a realistic threat to Tipperary. They weren't going to be playing them every year. So it's kind of a win-win situation. That's why you know, even someone someone like Davy Fitz, I know there was a, a link potentially a mooted with Offaly there as well like it's kind of I, I think it's kind of a win-win with Offaly really because it boosts the profile things have already the screw has already been well and truly turned under under Michael Dignan in the last two to three years and this will be another thing another little coup that would get the ball rolling even further and hopefully whatever about the next year or two if it did happen knock on effects down knock on effects down the line peaking the interest of a lad who's 19 or 20 and mightn't play senior in the county for two or three years but he goes in under a Sheedy and O'Shea, learns a huge amount, is conditioned, and then maybe flourishes under the next manager. It has knock-on effects when you bring in a guy like that, a guys like that. It just sets sets standards that aren't just eroded away in six months or anything like that. It sets standards that can go on for you know five to six years and potentially throw a guy's the whole of his inter-county career. It's some job Dignan's doing, really. Like, to turn the county around as quickly as... And I, I know it's not just him, and I know uh, there's like countless people who have been uh, along the way helping with those underage teams. And those underage teams didn't just all of a sudden made become manifest because Dignan got the the chairman's gig. There obviously had been great work going on in previous years, but at the same time, keeping the show on the road, keeping people inspired, getting the finances back in order, getting Glen gone, getting the two lads. This is that is some job he's done. Ah, yeah, well. Hopefully, hopefully he can finish this little job anyway and get the two boys over the line. But like, you couldn't have dreamed of winning All Ireland under twenty. You couldn't have dreamed. Probably, I know they were in the forest. The miners were in the forest. Tony Forrestal final. Uh, what is it? Three years ago. But to actually bring them through, and he put it. And that's not to say like it's all his work around like that. It's a serious amount of people with him, and previous regime, regimes would have done good work as well. But it's just the mood music in the county is an awful lot more positive, way more positive, and. People are willing to give of their their time and willing to give of their finances, be it businesses or otherwise, Shane Lowry and people like this, because of uh, the reputation and the stature that he brings to the post. And I think that's huge. Like the way you'd have to describe, Offaly is a vibrant county board at the moment. Everything is is not going on perfectly, far from it. There's always things you can improve upon. But yeah, the mood music has definitely changed big time. Even getting, I know he was only in as a coach, but getting Tomas O'Shea in as a coach last year, you, we just couldn't have dreamed of pulling off something like that. And now it looks like potentially uh, we could pull off another big coup and getting the two lads and hopefully we can get it over the line. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Davey then. So he's going back, as you said, to the bit where his intercounty journey started. He was a very young manager at that stage and that was kind of the end of that great Waterford team. Um, and yet they, they, obviously I think they did, I don't know. I don't know how people can characterise that. Did they do as well as they should have done? Did they slightly underperform? Does the All-Ireland final defeat and the manner of that leave a sour taste? I don't know what people think of that. But going back, he's obviously decided that he thinks there's something there that can win an All-Ireland because he's not going back to maybe just win a Munster title. He wants to win an All-Ireland with this group. Yeah, there's definitely potential there, Ger. Like They were in an All-Ireland final in 2020. They were in an All-Ireland semi-final in 2021. They won the league this year and looked like they were nearly the team to beat going into championship. Uh, it's still a bit of a mystery how and why the wheels came off in the championship. And like it, the wheels came off mid-championship, you'd have to say. They beat Tipperary in the first game. Fair enough, Limerick had, were missing players, but they pushed them to within three points. And then all of a sudden, there was, I don't know, was it a two- or three-week break? And the wheels just fell off thereafter. Um, but it's a different kind of a, a different kind of a situation. Davies coming into here. He came in mid-season in 2008 when Wexford uh, were beaten by Clare comprehensively in the Munster Championship. Justin McCarthy was ousted. You know, it probably wasn't going to be that hard to lift them, and he did. And he did lift them. Got to an All Ireland final in eight. Won a Munster in 2010. 
when he went in with Clare in 2012, I think he replaced uh, the Sparrow Lachlan. Things were pretty low. He lifted things quite quickly, won an All-Ireland, obviously won a league. When he came in in Wexford, again, things were, things were quite low. Lifted it again, massive buzz around the place in 17. They won their Leinster title in 19. I don't, like, he's coming into a Waterford team here that has the Waterford squad that has serious potential. They've a, you know, they're in All-Ireland Club champions, probably the favourites for next year's All-Ireland Club, club uh, championship as well in Ballygunner. Probably needs to coax a few more of those guys into the fold. Like in Austin Gleeson, Jamie Barron, Tyg de Borca, Connor Prunty, Desi Hutchinson. Like there is serious talent to work with there. So it's probably, he's probably coming into uh, Waterford a lot different than any other county job he's gone into before. Expectations are high in Waterford. Fair enough, last summer finished a bit like a, you know, finished in, in a disastrous situation. But the potential is there. He knows the potential is there. And I'd say within the camp, they know the potential is there. It is a bit surprising in that respect that maybe they went back to somebody who, like, there was lots of good in Waterford. There was lots of controversy in Waterford too. There was obviously the, he had a bit of a spat with Owen Kelly when, when he was Clare manager in 2012, saying about how many All-Irelands he had and how few All-Irelands Owen Kelly had. John Milan did a bit of a jig in front of Davy at the final whistle that day. There was obviously no love lost between the two of them, having been worked together for the previous four years. And now he's back there. And it's probably, of all the jobs in the country, it's probably one of the last ones you would have said that Davy would be associated with. Because while there was lots of good, and he said, I think he said in an interview this morning, you know, that we didn't do too bad in his kind of, his own kind of little way, the way he says it, as if the. <laughs> Big up his own achievements and not downplay it too much. But there was there was definitely um, some sour things that happened in there as well. But I suppose time is a great healer too and he's back again. It's been long enough at this stage for it not to be that relevant with the one exception of, you know, that team are now uh, heavily involved in the media in many respects. And so if things aren't going well, they'll have an opportunity to vent publicly against him if things don't go well. Yeah, true enough. Yeah, I think uh, I think Kevin Moore would have been the would have been the only player that would have been involved uh, from eight to eleven that would potentially would have been involved, and he obviously retired last year. So it's, there's none of the same faces. And I think an interesting aspect of it too, if you look at Davy's backroom teams from previous years, so Pat Bennett would have been you know one of the big guys that he would have always had involved with Waterford and with Wexford. He's involved with Kerry next year. Won't be there. Steve Malumphy was involved with him in Wexford. He's Kerry manager. Won't be there. Saoirse Bulfin is, was involved with him in Clare and Wexford. He's the new Mead manager. He won't be there. Um, and there's probably a couple of others as well that I'm not thinking of off the head. So this is going to be a different setup. It's probably going to have to be a different Davy as well. And it's probably going to have to be different faces. For example, as well, Niall Corkin, who was coach with him in Wexford in 20, he's staying at Wexford for 2022. He won't be there. So it's probably going to have to be a different Davy, maybe a bit of a different approach as well. And there's probably going to be a lot of different personnel in the backroom team too. One, one last aspect of this. A bit was made when Waterford were gone out of the championship with the fact that the team had leaked during the week. Like, in fairness, a lot was made of it by people who were close to the camp saying, oh, it's a really ridiculous situation where, you know, you, you try your best, make sure this doesn't happen, and the team leaks, something's not right, and then lo and behold, the team collapsed, and you're like, actually, maybe the right amount of a deal was made out of the fact that the team was leaked. What, what's your instinct about what happened? Was it, was there, did, is there something that we don't know that happened? And... Uh, that's just how some teams, sometimes teams come to an end? Or is there something fundamentally amiss? Like, is the, is the group lacking in leadership or something? Uh, I wouldn't say the group is lacking in leadership because, you know, in the likes of Tyg de Borca, Jamie Barron, Stephen Bennett and others, they have great leaders who have, like, inspired them over the last couple of years. But, you know, I've been involved in various camps where if things are going wrong and lads aren't happy... They're a lot looser with the information that they, that they give people, shall we, shall we say. Uh, maybe quick to vent. Now, that comes from an almighty high of winning the league to four or five weeks later, you know, the wheels have come off and maybe maybe players know that, that Liam Cattle potentially is not going to be involved. I don't know. There's, there's various rumblings of, of what happened in the background. We'll probably never know. But I'd say from Davy's point of view, the one way to protect against this is... Um, I don't think anybody potentially will know the team until the day of the game and then there'll be no leaks and if uh, maybe it'll be a Jim McGuinness type scenario where the phones will be taken off players and it will be impossible for them to leak but I think they'll be very it is a it's a lack of 
trust within a group when things like that get out. And it's it might seem like a small thing, but it's it's a big thing. You you don't hear these things coming out of Limerick. You don't you know, like you don't hear anything out of Dublin. Like we did we didn't know like nobody had realistically had a clue whether Conor Callaghan was featuring for Dublin in the All Ireland semi final until we saw the twenty six. We di- we didn't know. We could speculate all we wanted, but we didn't know. And Davy will have to bring that element of tightness back in with Waterford again. You would say that that has characterised his relationship with his players, certainly in the early stages of all of those jobs that you've outlined previously, that uh, while there have been uh, critics, and, and on, on here, you know, James Gale has been critical of the style of play and the maybe the lack of evolution of that style of play and, and the fact that maybe players aren't always given the freedom to make decisions. That was, that was his characterisation of it. Davy, Davy very strongly, I think, uh, would argue the toss that what they're doing is giving the players multiple options uh, and that sometimes the players don't take the right options and you know I think he would definitely fight back against that characterization of them but the one thing I think you couldn't accuse anybody or any of his teams of being would be not being completely unified like that Wexford team for example you definitely felt that everybody believed ultimately in everything they were doing some of the scores that they put together in even in that Tipperary game that they ultimately lost were absolutely sensational so I would expect that it's not guaranteed but if he can get that right, I would expect him to get that right. And if he can get that right, then the sky's the limit for this team. Well, he's a proven track record in the early years in particular with teams that he's definitely got that right. He got a great bounce out of Watford. He got the ultimate bounce out of Clare when he came in. Within two years, he had an All-Ireland that nobody expected. Uh, and Limerick or Wexford were at an all-time low probably when he came in. And he got a Leinster title out of them. And as you say, very unified squads. Uh, you know, even... If there were uh, dissenting voices in in any of those counties, you didn't hear them while he was there anyway. And it was all Davy this, Davy that, even amongst the, the Cork Camogie team as well. So unity is definitely something that he strongly goes after. Like I would have been involved with UL teams against LIT and it was the one thing you knew about LIT that he was going to extract every drop out of them. Now LIT was a little bit different because the faces changed every year. And maybe that's, you know, he was able to regenerate. And if a message became stale to a player two or three years' time, they moved on. Um, But he definitely, you know, people will often talk about Davey having a shelf life. He's coming in for two years in Waterford. It has, historically, it has always shown that he gets a reaction from teams, that he gets a lift from teams. And I wouldn't expect any different in Waterford, but the mood music in Waterford is different now as well. Like the the chairman, uh, Sean Michael O'Regan, had to come out on, on WLR saying, you know, to give Davy some time because there's already dissenting voices because a lot, maybe a lot of people in Waterford wouldn't be that happy with him coming back. Um, so they have probably a bit of PR work to do there to get everybody back on board before his reign even properly kicks off or before a ball is poked. What's the ceiling? Can they stop Limerick? To me, they're probably the one team that have the potential to, to stop Limerick. Like I don't, as in some of the players I named out there earlier, and in, in, you know, particularly four to five of those Bally Gunner players uh, and throw in Conor Prunty, who to me is one of the best fullbacks in the country. Tyg de Borca, one of the best probably defenders in the country. Austin Gleeson on his day is as good as what is out there. Jamie Barron, the same. Uh, Caleb Lines, like they've, to me, on their day, the best squad in the inter-county game. On their day, the greatest step to it. A lot of interchangeable players that will keep the levels high. I don't know what happened this year. We'll probably never know. But to me, yeah, they're probably one of the squads that could stop Limerick. But there's a lot of ifs and buts in that. There are a lot of ifs and buts in that. Were there other candidates who could have taken this role that would have would give you confidence that, uh, like, is that is 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 one of the things you're saying here that Davy's actually the best available candidate for this this role, and suddenly it kind of makes them live again? Are are we are you going that far? Uh, well, if you if you talk to a lot of people in Waterford, like the amount of live candidates within the county would not have jumped off the page to you. I'll, I'll put it to you that way. Uh, you obviously have Dara, Dara Sullivan, who's involved with Bally Gunner. That would have been his first inter-county gig. You have, would say, Peter Queeley, who would have been mentioned about pre- for previous jobs before. That would have been his first inter-county gig as well. You're bringing in someone who's probably tried and, t- tried and trusted, um, and he's you know already been to the mountain with, it, with a team before. So I think of the candidates that were available... Um, I don't know it was Eddie Brennan in the mix at all. He would have been someone I probably would have liked to see in that role. 
Um, but again, I don't know if, if I don't know if Eddie would have been happy with the potential of coming up against Kilkenny in a you know a big huge game in All Ireland semi final or final. But of what was available, maybe outside of Derek McGrath going back again, um, Davy was probably one of the best candidates. Okay, uh, the the next best available job at the moment, what's that? The next best available job at the moment, uh, we're just taking in hurling here. Yeah, yeah, yeah just the hurlers. Um, like. We haven't heard a peep out of Dublin. Haven't heard a peep out of Dublin at the moment. What nobody really knows what's going on there on a football front as well, because there was all sorts of rumours about potentially who was going to come in and, uh, as a new football management team. Um, probably looking like at the moment that Desi's still going to be there with the footballers. And since Matty Kenny stepped down, there hasn't been a peep out of Dublin hurling. And in fairness, I'll I give it to Waterford and I give it to the Dubs. Um, Watford might have struggled to keep their teams from leaking to the public but they did a pretty good job of keeping this from leaking to the public within a day or two of it actually getting over the line so Dublin have done the same and uh, I suppose we're got, we'll, we'll watch that with uh, we'll watch that with Bader Brett to me n- incomparable the level of scope within Dublin compared to Watford though. Watford are realistic All-Ireland contenders um, Dublin aren't and probably won't be for a while Michael, great stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. Cheers, Jart.